What's up guys and gals, I'm your host Mike Pugh of the FPC Virtual Channel and this is going to be a very unique video talking about background, how to make it stand out using the Open Broadcasting Software Studio. So as you can see, I have a bunch of backgrounds and they're running through an image slideshow currently showing and displaying for y'all folks to view while I'm talking in a background. So you can do backgrounds as slideshows and that would more like be a way for you to demonstrate or to talk about what the actual activity or whatever was going on when you took a photo of you as a photographer per se, or maybe you wanted to borrow some public domain images and you put it on your YouTube channel and then you know something of the subject matter that's in the actual image. Or probably you could use it as an active background like that in your video where it's just a still background, not even part of the slideshow. And you're basically, you know, just versing, talking, whatever, and using it to replace the background of your home location, maybe your room your office location, etc. So the idea behind it is finding something that stands out that has high quality like this this one per se this dragonfly it's really really dope has high quality and also it has to be relevant to what you're talking about. So <clears throat> if it's something that's not relevant to what you're talking about then it would be more more than likely something that is a still object something that's not in motion in real life and it's like still life like pretty much a wall walls are good or maybe a whole bunch of different graphics you can puzzle together you can use books like this in the background and then just talk and i'll show y'all folks um just the zoom my my video camera web camera up a little bit and you can see the differing view of how it looks when I'm at a higher scale. When I was down in the lower right corner, pretty much that's more like doing a guide or tutorial or maybe even like a gameplay for let's plays and stuff like that, right? Um, if you're doing like a zoomed up closer image, you probably are narrating, um, talking about the actual content that's in view. So these are the kind of things that I learned how to do. It takes a little time to build up just the, the awareness of what you're actually doing with the background behind you. Um, so let me just pause this, actually turn that off, and I'll bring individual images in. All right, so where did I get those images from? That's the question. Um, I'm on Pixabay. Pixabay.com is an awesome public domain website where it's free for you to use images there. Also, they have videos. As you can see, you'll be able to utilize for free differing videos that they have to offer that's within the pixabay.com website. It's an archive location pretty much where they store free videos from users who are offering their content up for free in the public domain and or those types of content that fell within the public domain and the website developers and whoever's part of their staff decided to merge it onto Pixabay. So pretty much that issues you a royal, not a royalty free, it issues you a public domain CC0 1.0 license for majority of these images. Like this particular one here, for instance, really, really dope macro shot of a flower, right? A lotus, looks like a lotus flower. Now, what you would do, you would go over here where you see the link CC0 Creative Commons and make sure you read every detail it says there. It says free for commercial use, no attribution required. So you don't have to actually give credit back. Attribution is just another name for crediting, crediting the original author. So you don't even have to put the link information or credit who uploaded this image through your YouTube description area. So that's why I like to use Pixabay. I've been using Pixabay for many, many years and it is dope. You can get some really, really high quality imagery and you don't have to do the work yourself if that's what you want to do. Um, or maybe you can't get to that particular location on the planet 
and that's what you wanted to get that type of content that represents what you're talking about the relevance of your video or maybe you had some ideas of creating unique videos that have multiple differing subject matter in it or maybe uh, keying in on one particular thing and you want to bring that out into your video but you don't have that content yourself so Pixabay definitely is a place for that. Pretty much if you want to get any of these you can download it you hit the free download option and then you would go in and choose the size that you want to download. What I recommend for YouTube videos is like 1280 by 853. This is not a bad size and pixel quality size but uh, 640 by 426 can also work as well. Another way to do it would be to right click and then go save image as. That's kind of a quicker way and you basically can save it and it goes straight into your folders. Whatever folders you have on your desktop or laptop computer. I'm going to click save just to show you all folks how easy it is to move it onto OBS. So let's go to OBS and what we're going to do, sorry about all the, the mirroring and stuff like that, that's the actual display capture. But what we're going to do, we're going to um, hit the plus icon at the bottom part where it says sources and then we're going to bring up image instead of image slideshow we're going to bring it up as an image to use it as a background for the video now if you don't know how to actually remove your background you can click in the upper right corner at this very moment in time that will take you to a video that I created a while back on how to actually remove your background using a green screen in your home so we're going to click OK where it says create new. Don't don't use any existing if you don't want to use any of those particular images. Add existing will just add something that you already have on your sources. So we're going to click OK. You can name it if you want to name it. That's up to you. And then what we're going to do is click browse. So when you click browse, that allows you to access your desktop folders from your PC or laptop computer. Uh, so let's go into browsing your desktop laptop I should say so click browse and then we're gonna find that actual image which is this one or it's actually a water lily, lily. I call it a lotus I was wrong whatever so good I'm not that great at flower names and all of that stuff ironically I, I run a flower community flower it's called flowerful on Facebook shameless plug check it out if y'all folks are into capturing flower photos or whatever so we're gonna click open and what that does it merges it onto the properties section and then all you got to do you don't have to click anything else here except OK so once you do that now you have it in to your actual scene but you want to resize it because resizing it is the effective way to use it as a full complete background so say I wanted to use the full thing I'll go right click transform and then you can go to stretch the screen and that will stretch the whole entire thing to fit the whole screen um, it won't work any other way unless you end up having some sort of a you know black bars on the side of your video if you want that then you just go for transform uh, let's see fit the screen other than that let's try to play around with some other backgrounds we want to create something unique like a still life type of background because this particular background would be great if I was discussing about flowers about floral about the flower world and flower kingdom right it won't work that well if I'm talking just in general about general topics that have nothing to do with flowers. alright so this one is kinda dope I actually like this because it has dimensionality and it somewhat provides a different perspective so dealing with perspective that deals with dimension right with the ability to see dimension within an image and I think that's awesome because it changes the perspective of the viewer so the person who's actually watching they're gonna get a different feeling from your actual experience that you're providing them through video so I actually like this and I think these kind of backgrounds could be something that could stand out if you're trying to do you know unique abstract type of videos things that you want to draw people's attention to in a very very different way from the average video that a lot of people don't actually try to add perspective with them um, some people they want to do flat videos at their home where you just see their regular home background and stuff like that and to me that doesn't stand out that much I mean there's some people who could vlog like that and they can do really really well 
because their personality stands out. But if your personality is not like that kind of a outgoing person, you're not loud, you're not um, the type that likes to yell and act a little wild and zany and all that stuff behind the screen, then you might want to go with having a loud looking background, something that actually stands out behind you that could raise the energy and the vibration of the experience. The more that you try to do that, I guarantee you, you're going to start to pull in more viewers because viewing pleasure deals with the eyes being pleased, right? So you have to offer something more from what you're providing than less. You have to offer the audience something much more for their senses to be stimulated. And audio visual is the power, is basically the power of how to do that. Um, perspective, adding perspective, adding camera angle changes adding nice slides in slideshows, um, transitions, um, adding more eye candy, any kind of eye candy that you can offer. The whole problem with it on YouTube is that people get hit with copyright infringement. I'm sure a lot of people have already. Maybe you watching have got hit with a copyright strike, one or two. If you got hit with three, nine times out of 10, your channel's shut down already. But if you didn't, if you didn't even get hit with any strikes, then you're lucky because maybe you already knew or you decided to um, to go the route of creating your own content. Maybe you thought to yourself, well, I'm not going to use anybody else's content and I'm going to create my own content. If you chose to create your own content 100 percent all the way through, even to, when it comes to music and you created your own music, that means that you are an originator. You are the intellectual property owner and you have the official copyright of that actual content now if you're not that type of person and you're just someone like myself who wants to use other people's content because maybe you can't come up with that particular thing maybe you're not a musician right and you haven't studied musical notes and how to create musical patterns and use instruments and stuff like that then maybe you haven't been the type who created music before so if you are like that and you wanted to use music in your video, obviously you would have to get the rights to use it or else you can get hit with strikes. You can hit, get hit with copyright issues. So that is the reality out here. That's what makes it a little bit more difficult for the average person who has a great many ideas. They have a nice personality. They have a lot of things going for them, but they keep hitting digital roadblocks that slow them down, that stop them in their tracks. And it really does get frustrated, but the problem is that you have to do research. And that will lead to my copyright series that I'm going to be offering. And I've been talking about it, brewing it up, talking about it, talking about it for like six months or more. And I started some copyright information years ago, but it hasn't become a full series. So the full series is going to be launched very soon. I'm not going to say exactly when. I want to keep more people actively thinking about it so that way the more and more videos that I put out eventually once it comes out people are ready for the actual series what I recommend for y'all folks to do though is to go and read up on copyright type in on Google YouTube copyright and that will bring you right up to it you can also go to the left extreme left of the website on YouTube on the newest version of YouTube the official website PC desktop laptop computer version on the website Go to the extreme left and then you should be able to see that information. Let me go over there and I'll show y'all folks real quick. And that will end my session after I'm done with that. Let's bring up the display display capture and I'll move myself down to the bottom over here so y'all folks can see. So let's go over to YouTube, right? You go to the extreme left of YouTube. And you'll be able to see it says about press copyright creators advertise developers etc so you click on copyright that link will lead you directly to copyright on YouTube and then get into this information read as much as you can read try to memorize stuff try to get it down gear it into your brain try to process it get with an, an attorney a lawyer anybody who is somewhat knowledgeable of legal terms and ask them to help you to break it down. If you can't break it down yourself, you can't understand it, for some reason you're having struggles with the legal information, ask them to help you. So that way they can help you digest what it's all about and also help you to get further through what copyright is. Now I'm gonna be offering the series on it 
from my FPC virtual channel covering as much information as I can find in it in terms of getting hit with strikes, how to fight the strikes, how to survive on YouTube despite the fact that you got hit with strikes, things like that. So I'm going to pretty much help y'all folks as much as I can. They got support and troubleshooting, learn about copyright, etc. All this is really important. Even if you're trying to use images to create backgrounds, that is the juice and the juicy information that you really, really need to survive on YouTube and also to thrive. Because once you become copyright learned and a scholar type person, someone who is more like an attorney or a lawyer themselves, instead of depending on them and relying on them, when you become that kind of person, now you have a stepping stone and you can excel at creating content that is unique whether you are the originator of the content or not you will understand i'm telling you you will start to understand and you'll you'll be able to accelerate and go up much much faster than the average person because the average person doesn't care to look up this resource or doesn't realize that it exists they just want to move fast and make cash or they want to move fast and post videos to share them around the planet and hopefully go viral and become famous or whatever whatever reasons they come up with on youtube to come up with their videos that's why they're doing it i don't know your reason you don't know my reason actually my reason for youtube videos creating youtube videos is to help other people who are on the opposite side of the screen than me on another side of the screen so whoever's watching these videos i'm trying to help y'all folks to understand stuff that was hard for me to understand at one time in my life that's why i create youtube videos i will have separate channels i do have separate channels as well that are more tuned towards fun having you know entertainment value for my audience stuff like that so i'm not that great at that kind of content so that's why i back off and i hold back but once i start to gear myself into that kind of a exploration of self of my own ability my capabilities what i'm knowledgeable of doing or what i care to do and put out there and propagate to the audience i guarantee you the audience is gonna like it a little bit more than the average because I understood, I did the research, I found out the rules, I found out how things work before I actually stepped onto the platform to try to start launching things in full effect. So other than that, I'm out of here. Joe Love and Peace to all, Mike Pugh signing off. I'll see y'all folks in the next videos and next videos and next videos. Feel free to subscribe, feel free to hit the thumbs up if y'all folks like this video. If you feel this video is gonna impact someone socially, on a beneficial level is going to be able to open their eyes and their ears to things like copyright stuff like that definitely feel free to share this video on facebook twitter instagram wherever that youtube videos can be shared because more people need to understand more people need to open their ears and their eyes to the information that's going to gear them to actually truly succeed some people will not tell you this information until it's too late you know what I'm saying? And they want to feed you all the eye candy, happy, hunky-dory stuff without giving you the reality behind the actual thing that they need to know. You know, what we all need to know is copyright pertains to every single video we put up. And that's the truth. Other than that, I'm out of here. I'll see y'all folks next time. Joy, love, and peace to all. Mike Pugh signing off. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and also the actual bell icon. There's a bell icon. That bell icon will get you my latest videos. See you next time. Peace.